Good morning, everybody. I am just gonna give it a minute, see who hops on here. Happy Wednesday to everybody. If you're hopping on, just give a hello or a shout out below, a like, a heart. Okay, I start to see some people jumping on, great. Okay, let me adjust my settings here. Okay. There we go. Hello, Janet. Good morning, April. Thank you, April. Yes, I have a new granddaughter. Grandbaby number seven. How exciting. Good morning, good morning. Okay, I see a bunch of people starting to hop on. All right, I'm gonna give it about 30 seconds and um, finish getting set up here. I had a little bit of a busy morning, so let me go ahead and grab a few things. back okay you're expecting grandbaby number six in December yay and the last <laughs> yes those grandbabies are um, just awesome and we have seven now and seven of them and all of them are five and under so I have five children myself so me and my husband we have five children together um, so when you know the kids all started having babies they all had them at one time so we've got a lot of when it is uh, the holidays or we have picnics and things here and all the, uh, the kids and the grandkids are here it is uh, glorious chaos as i like to call it so it gets crazy here and i always say we've always got one crying at least out of the seven we always have one crying or two crying and two arguing and fighting over some toys or something <laughs> because they are our five and under. So um, it's glorious chaos though, but I love it. You know, um, Roxanne, I, I agree. Um, oh, you're gonna miss it, okay. Sorry I didn't miss it, it's sending, okay. Um, okay, so for those of you, I see I got some people on. If you see the red live box up in the left-hand corner of your screen, that means I'm live. So if you are gonna watch this as a replay, um, we are on a new day. So usually I do them on Tuesdays. Uh, we're on a Wednesday because of the new grandbaby showing up. So um, go ahead and hashtag replay. Um, since it is a new day, same time, I just want to see if maybe Wednesdays are a little bit better for anybody. Um, still testing the waters out on that. So if you do not see the live button, the red box up above, you are watching it as a replay. Just hashtag replay, that way I know how everybody is watching it. Yours are 13, 13 and, 19, and 9 and they argue and cry. Oh my goodness, that's, that's the truth. Okay, so I had so many comments and questions about the full design doormat being in the box. So I'm going to start that one first just to go ahead and show everybody how I did it. It's, it's so easy and once you see it, you're going to have that aha moment where you're going to say, I can't believe I didn't even think of that. Okay, so um, I'm going to use the 15 by 15 press. This is what I showed you. If you need to go ahead and see how I did it before, um, just the regular one, I'm using the 15 by 15 again. My temp is 400 degrees. We are gonna press these for 60 seconds. Um, I did use the board this time, and let me show you, this is gonna be a makeshift board that I'm just gonna be using. I just found some, these are my shipping boxes. I just took some shipping box, I actually took three of them. I just taped them together. And this is gonna give it a little bit of um, stability underneath. 
and I'm just gonna set that on there. We are gonna pre-press. Now this is very, 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 very important. Pre-press your doormats. If you want that nice, vibrant color, I found that pre-pressing them and warming them up really helps with this. Um, in my other video, you've seen the cup trick. I am um, taking the cups and I'm just using them also as some stability under here. And it's just keeping this flat across, okay? So it's helping my cardboard. Uh, with some people do get a piece of like um, paneling and cut it to help with the stability of your, to keep your mat flat. You can do that. This is just what I had on hand. So this is what I'm gonna use. Okay, let me get my cover sheet. So we're gonna press these, pre-press these 60 seconds. Just to warm the surface up. I do heavy pressure on mine. Um, trying to read the comments too. Do you just have the truck design? No, I don't. Um, I might sketch one up. I'm, I probably, that's probably what I need to do. And um, I do some sketching as well. So I might sit down. My daughter's currently using my iPad, so. Hmm. I'm gonna try within the next few weeks to go ahead and do, get a truck design up and, and sketch one. I need to get my iPad off of my daughter. I do, and I can't never remember it, but I'm remembering it today. The program that I use to do my sketching with, when I do sketch some of my designs or do some uh, writing on my designs, what I use is I use the Apple Pen on my iPad. I think it's an iPad Pro. That might sound right. Um, on my iPad, the Apple Pen, and I use the Procreate program. And it was like a one-time fee for that. I think it was like $11 for the Procreate program. So I use that and, um, when I'm doing my sketching, um, any uh, writing or anything like that that I do on my designs. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to try to go ahead and draw up a new truck design and go ahead and get that out so that we have that for the holidays. And um, it's really just a great all time. So it could be red truck. You could color it different colors for the, use it for the um, different holidays. So we're just pre-pressing, getting our center warmed up. And then, uh, so like I was saying, this is very important if you really want a vibrant design at least I found that that's what helps me to get that vibrancy. The papers that I'm using are the A sub. Let me just get you. I will put all of this in the description at the end. I use the A sub papers to print on, and I print from an Epson. And I have converted an Epson 7720. I really need to get a better design set up here because this is just, I'm in such limited space here when I'm trying to do my tutorials. Okay, so now this is warmed up nicely. I just cool it a little bit so that when I lay my pr print down, I'm not, um, it's not immediately starting to press or do anything. That way if I need to shift it, then it's not, uh, the design doesn't start heating up and then start leaving like a ghosting on it. So I kind of just fan it out a little bit, get it a little bit cool, cooler, I should say. Okay. <laughs> You're going to say, how easy is this? Okay, so when I printed my design, I printed it on a full 13 by 19 print, okay? So here is my 13 by 19 print. And it was a full print, so when you print your design 
for this full box, or the, as we call them, the full blade, you're gonna do a full bleed, which means you're gonna cover your whole paper. Okay, so and this, is, this is mirrored. I know it looks like it's not, but the, that's the way the camera shows it because it's backwards. So this is mirrored. So print your full sheet on 13 by 19 paper. And then all you're gonna do is, I have attached the ends to the, uh, on another piece, uh, another portion of that design. You'll get two files with that. One is the full middle and then, or the, uh, the middle part, and then you're gonna get the ends. This is the ends. You're gonna get two of them on that print, on that file. All I did was print that out, and then I just cut it in half. There's a space in between the two, cut it. And then when I tape it, look how I'm taping it. I'm literally just taking that full print, the middle print right here, and I'm putting it up against here. I'm putting it up against the black. I am taping it very well to the back, okay? So, and then here's this. I need to cut off the other side a little bit. See how I just taped it? And really, I just taped it up against there. Don't tape it to the front, because remember, everything here in the front is what you're seeing and what will press. So if you put tape on the front, you're gonna see your tape lines. It's not gonna print that part. So you have to tape it, tape it to the back, and then just tape it really well. Make sure this lines up so it looks like one full print, okay? So let me get this, and then you're gonna need to put it up against your box here and then you're gonna to have to trim this side down a little bit. I think I can find my scissors. Okay, sorry about that, I had to find my scissors. Okay, so remember, tape to the back, and then I just stick it on here and then I look, um, and then I cut off the edge a little bit. You can overlap a little bit onto onto your black here because this red just does not show so it's not going to go to there and then I just go and cut cut the excess off on this if anybody has any questions along the way you can go ahead and ask I'll keep checking on the comments to see so as you see now, I hope you guys can see, but I really just have it within this black. So now it's ready to be pressed and then all I'm gonna do is just tape, tape, tape. So it's ready. I'm within this black box here. And remember, if you do a little bit around this black edging on the inside in here, it's okay because this red doesn't really print onto it. So now we're just gonna flip it over and we are gonna tape. And when I say tape, I mean I use lots and lots of tape because I am gonna be moving this on this press here. Now when I do it on my bigger press, I don't have to worry about the image really sliding. But since I'm using this one, we're gonna be sliding our, our board and our press. So we're gonna tape, tape, tape. I always say you can't do too much tape. And I always say, well, sometimes when you think you have enough tape, tape more. It's better than your design shifting. And let me tell you, we still all, all of us still make mistakes. I've been doing this for a while. I still get designs that mess up. I get ghosting. I'll, uh, and just user error. It happens. I have a big oops bin downstairs. And let me tell you, with your oops, um, things that you may have messed up, let me give you a little tip about that. Keep a bin downstairs or wherever you are, keep a bin. Um, my big press is downstairs, that's why I always refer to that. Keep a bin of your oops. And then, as long as it's not 
something that maybe is major to where it's really bad and you're like, no, I'm throwing that one in the garbage. Take your oops bin. Maybe you had a little bit of ghosting, a tiny bit of shifting. Uh, the edge maybe just cut off a little, but it was something that you feel that it's like, I cannot go to a craft show and take this and sell it. Take your oops bin with you. Discount it. I, you could discount it 50%. You staple yours down. Yes, you can staple these too. Um, I don't staple. I just use the, the heat tape. Um, take your oops bin with you. Discount it. Discount it 50%. You'll be surprised at the amount of people that's like, uh, I'm not worried about that little bit of ghosting. I'm not worried about that little bit of shifting. Or that tiny little piece of white that you didn't get in there. I don't care. I'll take it for 50% off. If it don't sell, no loss. If it's sold, you've recouped some of your money. Okay, so that's more design. Okay, so the design's taped down. And I'm going to tape some of my paper now. So that is a good tip. You can go ahead and staple this as well. I don't staple it, and I'll tell you the only reason I don't is I'm horrible with finding the staples when I'm done. And I don't want someone to be walking on this and someone using it because these are indoor outdoor. You can use. I just gave one as a gift and she loved it so much she didn't want to put it outside. She put it on the inside of her door coming in from her patio. Okay. All right, so basically that's it. We're ready to press. So 400 degrees, 60 seconds. You're watching from the hospital before surgery. Can't afford to miss this chemistry. Now let me tell you, that's funny. And I appreciate you um, watching, but that's funny. What is the ink on the outside of your printer? This is um, a continuous ink supply system. Uh, I'll put the link where I buy my, my inks from. Whenever this video is done, I'll post that for you guys. Um, this is an ink supply system, and then inside it has a cartridge. So as you see, this will run up in. There will be a cartridge inside. And I refill my inks. I don't pull my cartridges out. I refill my inks through these. So I just pop these off. I put the colors in. It was just easier. I think for me, it holds a lot more. And I was able to visually see what my supply was. So when I'm getting a little bit low, I, um, I know where I'm at, as you can see. You can see my levels, like my blacks here. I've got the, um, the blue up there, the magenta, the yellow, the cayenne. So I can see them visually. So that's what that is. That's a continuous ink supply system. That's what I use. Okay, so now we are gonna gently, trying to not move this, We're gonna move this on down. For some reason, oh, I hope I got that. I think I don't have this back far enough. Well, we'll see if the first one print pressed right. Okay, so like I said, everybody messes up. I'm not sure if this right here, if I actually got it all the way down, I didn't realize it wasn't under my press all the way. Um, so this is a CISS as they can talk can, as they call it. It's continuous ink supply system. This is the system that I prefer to use. It's just better for me to see where I'm at. Um, a lot of people like to refill their cartridges. Um, this one I feel is a little bit easier than refilling because you got to fill with syringes. I have a little funnel that I found actually at Michael's um, for glitter. And I just take that little funnel and I pour it in. So to me, I think this was personally what I what I liked. You've been hesitating to do your map because I heard there is a terrible smell. Um, I feel that it's it, to me it's not that bad, but I'm in a big room. But you can always, if you needed to, just get a mask, put it on. Um, I don't think that the smell is too bad. 
Believe it or not, I actually think that my mug press smells worse. My husband complains about it all the time. He says it smells like rotten fish when I'm pressing mugs. So let's do the big reveal. Hopefully I got everything pressed while I was talking to you guys. Oh yay. Okay. And I missed it down here with my heat press. Okay. So see, I still mess up as well. But I didn't realize it after I was done. Let's see how I didn't get that. Let me show you how it turned out though. The press is beautiful. And this was just user error. All right. How I didn't put my press all the way over. I didn't have it all the way over. So just be careful when you're doing it, make sure that your press is covering that part, and I didn't. And I realized that after I'd moved that I didn't have it under the press, but it was already too late. So this will go into my oops bin. But look how beautiful that prints. Just be careful when you're doing it, make sure that you, and overlapping the rugs in the design is, um, it doesn't seem to give that funny double press like sometimes it does. But just make sure when you do it that you're watching. I wasn't watching. It is an easy fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out another edge here, just an edge, and I'm actually just going to restick this under. So I have done that. But you, it's hard to do like a design, but with this being a fix, um, I, I'm just going to take another block and I'm just going to lay it along this edge a piece, and then I'm just going to press it again, and that'll fix it. You can repress over the red, correct. So I'll fix that in a little bit, but that's how it is. So just be careful when you're doing it to make sure that you get your whole design. That was that was my error, and I realized that when I moved it. So that's it. Um, I gave myself a board to lay it on. You know, this is only gonna last for a couple presses. So don't expect these to be lasting. The cardboard, they go flimsy after a while and kind of start to buckle. Okay. So moving on, it does look good. Other than um, user error of not being able to, I didn't have it all the way under, but I'll fix that. I'm just gonna take another piece of red. I'm gonna lay that strip there and I'm gonna press it. And that'll fix it. On these doormats, you can do that. On a lot of the other um, images, you can't. But these doormats, these doormats, um, they're, they're okay for the double, double pressing. For some reason, they don't really give that funny um, difference to them. Okay. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions on that before I move on? Red Sharpie will fix that. Red Sharpie can fix that, but you got to make sure it's the perfect red Sharpie. So I'm just going to take a heat press. I'm going to take a little strip and press that again on that whole red. I'm just going to do that red again, and it should be okay. Yes, repressing. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Um, let me get that canvas for you guys. No matter how ready I always think I am for these, I'm never that ready. Okay, so this is the canvas. Um, I know a lot of sublimation, um, People are, have converted over starting with vinyl. And this was a big thing in the vinyl world um, a couple years ago. So I even want to say last year it was pretty big. The year before I know it was really big. Um, but this one I'm going to do with sublimation. So with sublimation, we already know that 100% cotton really doesn't work, especially for like garments you're going to be washing. Now, this, um, with, with reverse canvas, this is just, let me show you what I started with. This is just one of these that I bought at Michael's or Joann's. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. It's just one of your canvases. Okay. So with sublimation, if you put it on 100% cotton, it gives you that vintage look. And if you're going to use it on shirts and stuff, it will wash out. But considering we're not going to be washing these, you could go ahead and print right on your canvas here. It will look vintage. And I don't have one.
to show you, but it will be a lot more faded, a lot more vintage. You can do that. This one's really vibrant because what I've done is I've used actual um, poly duck canvas. So, in order to do your reverse canvas, we're going to need to actually cut this canvas away. So like I said, you actually could use this to print on if you wanted to and get a more vintage look. I was looking for the more true color vibrant look, so I'm gonna replace this canvas out. So all you do to cut this away is, I just used an X-Acto knife and I literally just cut this off. And as you see, I just cut it where it would just come off. Personally, I'm not worried about this because this covers up once I staple back down. Okay, and then I took and I painted my frame out to get this. So when it's done, my frame's painted. You can paint any color you want. I just used a matte paint, um, a flat paint. I didn't seal it or anything, but if you wanted to get a more glossy look, you can. I'll probably put some, um, some gloss on there just to seal it. So all I did was cut along with an X-Acto knife, cut along my staples. As you can see, there's still canvas on here. I'm not worried about that. I'm not really concerned about that. And to be honest, um, I don't think it's a really a concern. If you feel like, I mean, you can go ahead and take all of these staples out, but let me tell you what, to me, it was not worth it. it these are so hard to get out and uh, I'm like, forget that. So I don't. So I cut the canvas off of there. And then what I'm using is, I'm actually using, I'm gonna put a link to it too, but this is called Poly Duck Canvas Cloth. And I actually just buy this, this comes in, by the yardage. So you can buy these by the yard, this fabric. Um, it's not really expensive. Um, it's considering how much you can get out of one yard. Depending on your size, I wanna say this one is a 16 by 20 or 11 by 14. This one is a, a 12 by 16. So I'm thinking the inside they're considered, yeah, it would be 12 by 16 because when you get them, they're wrapped on the outside. So, and you can actually, if you wanna rewrap this and just wrap it again with your, um, you can go ahead and rewrap this as a canvas or I'm gonna do the reverse canvas. So very easy, I just took some of that uh, poly duck cloth and I just cut it down to the size I needed. And the size I'm using is actually, I just took this out, I kind of just, while it was laying there, I marked it to just be like at the edges. You can do it a little bit um, more if you feel that you want to do that. It's a little bit easier to kind of stretch on and then it works out a little bit better if you have a little bit more pulling room. But this, I just cut the, this around it. I literally laid my frame down, just cut, uh, mark the box, and then cut it off. <clears throat> and then I just printed out, this is the design I was gonna use today, okay? Um, so you can use any design in there, you can write anything. That was for my granddaughter, so I made her birth stats on there. And then once I printed this, um, I always say print usually a little bit beyond your fabric. Okay, so give yourself at least a quarter inch around. Any, anything that you're printing on, always give yourself at least a, a quarter inch um, excess so that it prints the whole piece. All right, so then when I did my design and then I printed it out, I actually went back and I just put it in here to make sure that that fit. And I did have to adjust it like one, one time. I didn't have it enough. <clears throat> okay. So let me know. I'm going 
going to do is I'm just going to take this down. Try and center it. And this, um, this poly duck canvas that you're looking for, that you, that, that there is, it actually almost feels like what our flags are made of, the garden flags. A little bit more thicker, but it's, it's, I think it's like the same concept as a garden flag is. Tape it down really well. I know a lot of people like to use the spray adhesives. Um, I've not had really good luck with it, so I don't use the spray adhesive. Okay, so I got my design tape down. This is just like printing a flag, anything else. Face up. Making sure I got all of this in my press. If the edges fall off a little, it's okay because I'm not you're not gonna see that. It'll be under the frame. However, though, if you're gonna wrap your, um, your frame again, you're gonna need to make sure that it gets it all around. So we're gonna do this one, 400 degrees, 60 seconds. Oh, let me address my press. This is heavy pressure. Always make sure you're adjusting your presses in between different substrates because you're going to need to make sure you have the right pressure for whatever you're doing. Okay, so 60 seconds, 400 degrees as well. Where can you get the poly duck fabric from? Um, I actually purchased this at Condé. Condé. I'll go ahead and leave a link up above when I'm done. Um, I'll leave it for the printer ink as well as um, the poly, the poly duck canvas. Um, they have beautiful gallery wraps there where you can go ahead and put your gallery wraps together as well. And then you can go ahead and buy the poly duck canvas uh, by itself. The, the fabric, so I'm just buying the fabric. Um, I'm eventually gonna start doing the gallery wraps, but I just haven't yet. And then this canvas, before you kind of tear it off, I got these in a pack, so I got these at a really great value. So I was really, I, I use these as well for some, um, some of my uh, vinyl. So, but they were like on that you got a pack of like six for 10 bucks. So I was like, I don't mind taking, cutting that away and using my own. Okay, so let me show you how this turned out. So now we printed this onto the poly duck. Look how beautiful that prints. It's, it's really vibrant like a flag. So this is why I love the poly duck versus the 100% canvas, just because it's, um, I didn't want that vintage look. I wanted more of the true colors that, uh, the true colors look, the vibrancy. And the 100% canvas, I can't get that from. The cotton canvas, I can't get that from, so I use the poly duck. These are really so simple to make. And then now all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down, make sure that's perfect in there, which it is. And then I'm just going to staple, literally, I'm just going to staple it on. And I'm just using a light stapler that I got from Walmart, it's the Stanley stapler, uh, stapler, and I wanted to say it was light duty. So when you staple your canvas on, easy way to do that is one end, turn it around, stretch it, pull it taut to the other end. 
And then I like to make sure that it looks still still centered when I do it. So I just kind of hold it and pull it. And then sometimes you'll need a hammer to go ahead and hammer those in that you didn't get in all the way. Okay, still looks good, so I'm going to continue on. Now go this side. And then when you do it, like I said, one staple, pull it, look at the other. So it's always across from each other when you're doing them. It just keeps it, that just keeps it centered. Okay, now I will continue to go around and pull the staples in. stretchers for the galler when you're going to wrap your whole frame but for doing this I don't think that you really need to I just kind of stretch it okay so there it is I'll probably go ahead and put a gloss on this before I actually staple this in um, but I was running late this morning so I didn't so that's it that's it so and then when it's done you can go ahead and you've got it all stapled you can trim up this back with your exacto knife and if you really, really, really want to get picky, you can take a piece of the brown um, or the butcher paper, the brown canvas uh, or crafting paper. I just take it, um, again, I just lay it on my paper, I mark it with a pen, cut it out, and then I take it back here. You can either staple it on or you can go ahead and just hot glue it around and then it just kind of gives more of a finished look. But like, how easy is that? You could do children's pictures in here. You can do, um, as I've done for my daughter, some birth stats, some Christmas pictures. And it's really just, you can pretty much use anything. You can do it this way if you needed to. So vertical, horizontal, or portrait, horizontal, landscaping. Really very easy to do these. And like I said, I don't mess with I know when everybody was doing the reverse canvases, they were like pulling every staple out. That is, if you even try to pull one out, you'd be like, no, I'm not doing that. That's easy. Okay. That's it. How easy were both of those? And they, you know, they seem harder than really what they were. They were really easy. Um, so you can really just make your own frames. Um, yeah, you could if you wanted to, if you wanted to do the, um, two by twos, two by threes, make them into a frame and then just stretch that on there. Perfect. 400 degrees is Fahrenheit. Um, oh, Lori, you're welcome. And, uh, there was something else I wanted to tell you guys. I knew I should have wrote it down. Um, hmm. Well, I can't remember it right now. You have a tool to pull the staples out. Oh, yeah, I probably should get that, but I haven't. So, and I know taking them out with the screwdriver and it's just, it's miserable. So maybe the tool would be easier. My husband always says, right tool for the right job, so that probably would work. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and leave in the information. I'll leave my ink supply system, where I get that from, um, the time and temps on the fabric, and where I get the fabric from. Okay, everybody, so that's really easy. I am actually going to go visit my granddaughter. Let me show you real quick. These were also, I am actually going to take these over to my daughter, granddaughter's house today, my son and that. This was the pillows. Sorry. 
Look how beautiful these pillows, and I sell these pillows in my, um, in my shop. So look how beautiful the pillows turn out. And I've done these with you before. So I do have a video for that. Anybody who's looking for my other videos, you can always hit the photos button and then go back. Uh, there'll be a little tab up there and in there it'll say videos. So you can ch check that out. I have a video on pressing the pillows, the pillow covers. And for the pillow inserts, I just get them. You can get them at Walmart, um, Joann's, Hobby Lobby's, Michael's. They all have the inserts. And then I also have this blanket in my shop. This is the Sherpa. And this is so, so soft. It is a Sherpa uh, Micro Minky. But look how beautiful these sub. And I do have these in, and I just placed another order for these, and then just the Micro Minky blankets are becoming, the, um, so without the Sherpa back. And they'll just be white on both sides, and they're super soft. So I just placed an order for those last night. So I will be getting um, I do have a few of these available on hand right now, and then I'm going to be adding a few more. Um, I should probably get that order probably early next week. Um, which program do I print from? Most of the time, what are your frames from? Um, most of the time I'm printing, um, I do a lot in Photoshop. So that's where I'm printing from most of the time. Um, very pretty, love your name. Uh, thank you. The design for which one? For the um, for the baby? I don't have that. The baby stats, the birth stats? No. Um, I don't have that in my shop yet. I'm trying to figure out how to actually make that so it can be um, either editable or how I would put that in there so that you guys can go ahead and add the, what you need. How much do I sell the canvases for? When I was doing the canvases for the vinyl, I was selling them about $10 each. Um, and believe me, that was a lot more work, putting your vinyl in, getting your vinyl cut. We did this right here, sublimation. Uh, as you know, it's just print and staple. So. $10 on this is probably even a better profit margin. So I probably would say maybe $10, $12 at a craft show. The canvases were in a bulk pack that I got. Um, I did get, wait for them to go on sale when you do them because, uh, or use a coupon if you go into the stores and get the, the bulk canvases because that then they're definitely more cost effective. I usually wait for them to go on sale. Um, I would think there was like five or six in that pack and I got them for $10. And really, I was only using the frame. Um, but I do keep them on hand because my, my grandkids like to go ahead and paint on them. So um, I usually buy them in bulk. Um, where else to get the doormats other than Home Depot? I really don't know, Cindy, because that's the only place I've ever got them. Um, I don't even know. You might need to just do a Google search for them. Um, they're Traffic Master. Let me see if I can get. This is actually the info that you want. So if you Google it, it's the 18 by 30 Traffic Master Border Doormat. And it is 100% polyester. So. If you maybe Google it, you might be able to find somewhere else that has it. I've just, my Home Depot, I live, I, I'm in the city. Um, and uh, I have like four or five different Home Depots within, I don't know, 15, 16 miles. I know under 20 miles in my area. So they're easy for me to find. I know a lot of people don't. And I did see um, someone mentioning, so I did check it out. You can get some places, some will allow you to do shipping to your door for $8.99 express shipping. Um, not all of them do that, Not so I don't know. You can try that and see if that would be available to you. That brand's only sold at Home Depot? Okay. Yeah, I was unsure of that because I've not had to look anywhere else for it. 
So maybe you want to see if there's any shipping um, that could be available to you currently. On blanket, what size paper and how many? <clears throat> All right, I did, um, someone had asked me this yesterday, I think it was. That is a tricky question because every blanket's different. On this current blanket, when you're doing these, I did, I'd have to look back in my settings. I want to think it was 11 by 12. Um, the best way I can say is usually how I would, uh, what I'm finding is I am not an expert on blankets, let me tell you. Matter of fact, when I pressed this one, I had a crease here. But it's going to my granddaughter, and I know mom won't care. So just be careful when you're doing these to make sure that it's not creased. I didn't realize that until after I pressed it. But um, this right here, I want to say, is probably 11 by 12. And I found when I did this, what I did was I took it, I put it in half, and then I pressed it. So what I did was I had a line down the middle that gave me this to work with, okay? So then what I did was I took this length to this length, uh, the white box. I figured out how much, how many inches I had, and then I divided that in to see um, how many, I did it by, you know, just divide it and seeing how many I could put on here. And this one happened to fit 11. So, you know, I'm, I'm not a math person, but unfortunately with this kind of designs, you have to do them this way. Um, I'm going to do a baby blanket with you guys, and I'm going to show you maybe a simpler solution on filling up your minky or your baby blanket. So that was what I did with this, and then I just figured it out, and I, um, it was a little bit of trial and error. Uh, I took some regular printer paper out of my regular, not my sublimation, printer, and then I just kind of started messing with the design and doing it at different, um, different sizes. And then I printed it upstairs on my regular printer so I didn't waste sublimation ink. And I just printed it in a draft quality so it was just printing really lightly. And then I started uh, placing them on my blanket and then found out what size I needed. So that's a little tip maybe for these. So that's it. And... Um, just wanted to show you, I had this laying around. This is a little minky, a uh, little, I uh, think they call them cuddle bugs, cuddle buddies. I had this laying around, but look, that even, the, even that design and that, you still can print on light fabrics. So this is a light pink, but um, I took that same design, same colors as this, and then I just printed it on a little, uh, I think they call them either cuddle blankets, lovey blankets, so I'm gonna give her this one as well. Okay. I know that's showing up as a, there's a line there, but there's really not that you can't see in person. So don't be afraid to print on your light fabrics as well. Okay, um, what paper do you cover your design with on the mat? I use butcher paper. You can find it in the roll. I'm getting toward the end of my roll. Um, this is just unwaxed butcher paper. I find this at my local um, Gordon Food Service, GFS. Sam's Club sells it as well, and I think Costco does. You get like 1,000 feet of it um, for like $25. So if this is what you, this is the most cost effective way to cover your designs when you're covering your, um, heat press and your design definitely do this if you run short and you're in a pinch you can always use uh, parchment paper that's what I've used the kind that you bake with like cookies and stuff on um, that's how I started out until I was like somebody had mentioned this in one of the groups and I was like that's much co more cost effective so this is something that uh, you'll definitely want to invest in because you're going to be using lots and lots of this never reuse your cover sheets ever because you might not see it but ghosting will be there and by ghosting I'm going to show you an example I'm not sure if this one's it you 
might not see it, but look how faint that is. I know it's showing up a lot lighter, but in person, this is super, super faint. This is what ghosting is. So once um, your paper gets this, always change them out in between your designs because this will transfer onto your next design and you don't want that. Okay, so if that's all the questions, I will leave the links up above. Um, I am, oh, and currently I do for the whole day, since I do a demo, I usually put my um, a design that I'm using on for uh, on sale, and I actually put all of the designs on sale today, so all of my designs are 40% off in my shop. Today only, it, uh, it ends at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm on Eastern Standard Time. So if there's anything that you want to try, that you want to go ahead, grab it while they're on sale today. Um, it's just, a, I, that's what I usually do on a day that I am usually pressing. And usually it's only one or two images. Today I just decided to put them all on since I'm doing reverse canvas. And I never know what you guys want to go ahead and try it on your um, canvases or even on your doormat. So 40% off today only ends at midnight. <laughs> Okay, I am gonna get off of here. I'm cooking dinner actually for my son and daughter-in-law. They are coming home today with the baby, so I'm gonna go take them some dinner so that uh, they don't have to worry about that today. All right, everybody, thanks for watching, and um, who knows what I'll be here with next week. So I might try it again on a Wednesday. We'll see how that is. And I will let everybody know what uh, probably like Tuesday on Tuesday Tuesday night I'll let everybody know what I'm gonna do and this is Labor Day weekend so everybody have a great weekend with your friends your family or just relaxing